This video lesson was created and written specifically for you. It is here to assist you in mastering forces. This lesson's scope allows it to be used in a variety of learning situations. After taking this lesson, you should be able to investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of change in the object's motion. Force can be operationally defined based on observed effects. This means that a force can be described in terms of what it does. However, forces do not always cause motion. It does not necessarily follow that forces acting on an object will always cause it to move. Figures below are examples where forces have tendency of changing the motion of an object or not. What can forces do? Forces can produce changes in motion. What are these changes in motion? Most of the motions we come across in our daily life are caused primarily by force. To better understand the topic, perform the simple activities that follow effective force on a ball. Examine the ball on top of the table, see figure 6. Choose the letter of your answer to the given conditions below. In letter A, is the ball at rest? A. Yes, B, no. How can you make the ball move? A. The ball has to be pushed or pulled, B. The ball has to be pulled only. In letter B, what happens to the ball when you push it with enough force, A. The ball moves in the same direction as the force, B. The ball does not move. In letter C, while it is moving, how can you make the ball stop, A. Exert a force opposite the motion of the ball, B. The ball has to be pushed in the same direction of its motion. In letter D, how can we make the ball change its direction? A. The ball has to be pushed sideways. B. The ball has to be pushed in the same direction of its motion. You have observed that the ball moves once you push or pull it. This is called force. Consider a ball on top of a table as shown in figure 6. The ball will not move when there is no force applied to it as in figure 6a. If you push the ball, it will move or roll across the surface of the table as shown in figure 6b. And when it is again pushed in the direction of its motion, it moves faster and even farther as illustrate in figure 6b. But when you push it on the other side instead, opposite to the direction of its motion, the ball may slow down and eventually stop as shown in figure 6c. Lastly, when you push it in a direction different from its original direction of motion, the ball also changes its direction as in figure 6D. In conclusion, force can make the ball, or any object move, move faster, stop, or change its direction of motion. But, does this occur always? Can force always affect change in the state of motion of an object? To accurately describe the forces acting on an object, let us examine the figure below. Figure 7 shows how force acts on a ball, but you need to be familiar with the following terms. Magnitude refers to the size or strength of the force. It is commonly expressed in Newton for meter kilogram second system, dyne for centimeter gram second system and pounds for foot pound second system. In the international system of units, Newton is commonly used which is named after Sir Isaac Newton, an English physicist and mathematician. Direction points to where the object goes. The direction of the arrowhead indicates the direction of the force. The length of the arrow represents the amount of force, relative magnitude. Point of application, the location of where the force is applied, line of action, is the straight line passing through the point of application and is parallel to the direction of force. There are two types of force, namely, contact forces, forces where objects touch or contact with each other, non-contact forces, forces where objects do not touch or contact with each other, these forces act over a zone or area called field. Examples of contact forces, applied force, a force given to a person or object by another person or object. Its symbol is F, depending on who or what applies force to the object. If a boy applies a force to a wall, we denote it with F boy. 
refer to the figure below. Friction is the force acting against or opposite an object in contact with which makes the movement of the object slow down. Friction always opposes the motion of an object. Its symbol is written as FF. Air resistance denoted by F air is an example of frictional force of the air against a flying kite, airplanes, parachutes, or those in skydiving sports. For free falling objects, this force is always considered negligible, meaning the magnitude is unnoticeable. Normal force is the force that acts perpendicular to the surface of the object in contact with. Its symbol is F, N. Tension is the force applied to string, rope, chain, or cable. Its symbol is T. Examples of non-contact forces, gravitational force, is the force of attraction between two objects. In the case of the Earth, this gravitational force causes objects to fall down to the ground. It makes satellites and smaller objects stay in orbit near the more massive planets. Mass and distance of the two objects affect the gravitational force that holds them. The bigger the masses of the objects are, the bigger is the gravitational force between them. The closer the objects are, the greater is the gravitational force between them. The figure below illustrates gravitational force between the Earth and the Moon. Earth has bigger gravitational force over the Moon. The weight of an object, denoted by W, is an example of the gravitational force of the Earth towards the object. In figure 13, the weight of a book is illustrated. However, the weight of an object depends on the mass of the celestial body where the object is attracted to. Meaning, we seem to be lighter when we are on the moon than on the Earth. Magnetic force are forces exerted on a field of attraction or repulsion as in the case of magnets and other magnetic materials. Magnets and magnetic materials have two poles, the north and south poles. Attraction may occur when two poles are not the same, a positive and a negative while repulsion takes place with the same poles, positive positive and negative negative. To describe a force, you must know two things. You must know the magnitude and the direction of the force. Suppose two teams are playing tug of war as shown in figure 15. Each team is pulling with equal magnitude of force, FA and FB, on the rope but in opposite directions. Neither team can make the other team move. Forces that are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction are called balanced forces. Balanced forces do not cause a change in motion. When balanced forces act on an object at rest, the object will not move. When you push a box and then it moves, unbalanced forces are present. Forces that cause a change in the motion of an object are unbalanced forces. Unbalanced forces are not equal and in opposite direction. Suppose that one of the teams in tug of war, as shown in figure 16, exerts greater magnitude of force, FB, on the ground than the other team, the forces applied on the ground would no longer be equal. One team would be able to pull the other team in the direction of the larger force. In an object, there may be several forces acting on it. Net force or resultant force is the sum of all forces acting on an object. Two or more forces in the same line of action exerted on an object are balanced if their effects cancel each other. When an object is at rest, a zero net force would make the object remains at rest. Moreover, when the object is moving, a zero net force would make the object maintain its velocity at a given time interval. In a moving object, a net force will increase its velocity when the force is in the same direction of its motion. If the net force is in the opposite direction of the object's motion, the force will reduce the object's velocity. When the net force acts sideways on a moving object, the direction of the object's velocity changes. Forces can be applied to objects in different directions at the same time. It is important to identify all the forces acting on the object which cause change in the motion.